Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I've come to the South Coast Boat Show here at Ocean Village Marina in Southampton. And I want to show you a cool little cruising catamaran here. Now, catamarans are often very large vessels. This one is only 33 foot and it's also just inside five meters, which means that you can fit through the Crinan and Caledonian canals here in the UK. It's a really exciting proposition to have a small catamaran it's got standing headroom throughout, it's designed for a cruising couple with some friends and it's for long-term coastal cruising. So let's go and have a look at aboard. Let's just have a quick look at the outside of this boat. Compared to the predecessor, the 345, um, they've got rid of the nacelle underneath to reduce slamming, and they've made the hulls finer entry. And there are some little chines there, little knuckles halfway up the hull to uh, reduce the waterline beam. And then you've got twin head sails that you can see, um, a self tacking jib, and the mast has been moved aft to accommodate that. You've got a solid foredeck here rather than a trampoline, which maximizes accommodation and stowage. Then you've got this uh, saloon and galley with standing headroom throughout. And then you've got the mast, which as with most cats is quite well uh, far aft. So a fairly well balanced um, rig by all accounts. I've not sailed it yet. I'm hopefully get on and have a look. So you've got the mast reasonably well far aft. You've got this completely enclosed cockpit tent and all of the sail controls are at the foot of the mast, which we'll have a look at in a second. And then you come aft to a bathing platform here, um, and there's also dinghy stowage on the transom here. So you board this boat at the stern, we come onto this really large bathing platform that doesn't have the dinghy here at the moment. Now, things to notice here is I've got the starboard main sheet here, and there's another one to port. So you've got two main sheets to control the position of the boom, keep the boom down, Luff tension, leech tension on and you've got this big uh, mooring cleat here and actually this boat has um, electronic throttles which means that you can have um, remote controls for both engines and because you drive a catamaran like a tank a little bit as it were putting one engine forward or the other engine forward you can actually maneuver yourself into your berth standing right next to the mooring cleat and you don't have to be at the helm at all which is a really cool little idea. Let's go into the cockpit. So in the cockpit, um, starting with the helm position, you've got a, a wheel here. It's got hydraulic steering, um, so it's not going to give you loads of feel through the helm, but that's slightly less important on a multi-hull anyway. Um, and you've got your sails, so you balance the boat using the sails. Uh, we've got uh, twin throttle controls here, twin beta um, inboard engines, uh, and then we've got our um, chart plotter instruments, and anchor windlass here, all controllable from the helm. Um, I can see 360 around the boat or above this. Um, and if I needed a bit more view, I can stand up there. Or as I said, you can also use the um, remote control for the engines with the electronic throttles so that I could be standing on the foredeck to moor to anchor, or I could be standing on the stern quarter to moor, which is really cool. Um, as a full height, um, door down into the saloon there. We'll go and have a look in a second. Um, but the next thing that's really special to these boats, um, and uh, very few uh, cruising catamarans have this, is this central sail station. Um, and all of the lines, or virtually all of the lines, are led to this point at the foot of the mast. So you've got very short halyard runs. Uh, there's a powered winch. Um, uh, and the button is actually next to the helm, so I can control sails from the helm. And there's a manual winch as well. And I've got everything here from topping lifts and halyards to reefing lines to uh, main sheets, jib sheets, um, and even the jib traveller. Um, and that is above this huge rope bin here, so all of your halyards just stuff down in there. Um, and you can access it through the bottom there as well. And there's a, power, a foot pedal here, um, so that you can lift that up and control your powered winch as well, which is really nice. And then over on starboard side, we've got this sociable area, um, gas locker just under here. 
uh, and then you've got a saloon table that will it's a, a smallish table but you can easily fit sort of six or six or seven people around here um, and there's a seat that slots onto a hole on the deck here as well uh, which is currently at the saloon table which they've reused um, so you can have lots of people in their seating to, uh, to port side as well I'll just show you this at the uh, back of the cockpit so at the back of the cockpit you've got this really nice touch you've got the seating at the normal level here but you've also got raised level seating it's slightly restricted by the cockpit tent at the moment which is up um, under which you've got full standing headroom even for somebody of sort of six foot three six foot four plus i'm six foot one um, but this is really nice seating here with a backrest just behind me because it means that i've actually got full forwards views where in a catamaran often the the non-sailing crew are sort of shoved down into the cockpit where you can't see so much and you're just looking backwards but this i can actually sit here in comfort put my feet up um, and i can see forwards if we zip the side of this tent down then i can also do that in complete shelter right let's go up on deck so nice steps make it really easy to get out and even actually with the cockpit tent in place it's an easy step onto the side deck and the only control lines i've got here these are the genoa sheets which will come to the cockpit winch i think um, and rather than the self-tacking jib sheets and then i've got furling lines for both head sails here and really easy clear side decks to go forwards on so coming forwards from the handholds on the coach roof there to the guard wires and we're onto this really big open foredeck there's no trampoline so you've got loads of working space um, there's a cavernous bow locker in here for your fenders, lines and all of the anchor chain um, and then you've got your twin head sails here so that's your self-tacking jib um, and that's your Genoa. Um, the anchor goes onto a bow roller there um, back to an electric windlass. We're saying there's a small bow sprit here just to get the Genoa a bit further forwards for downwind sailing. Nice little touches like these bow seats so you're at anchor or in calm conditions you can sit here and watch the world go by um, there's plenty of space for putting cushions on the foredeck here um, so for a 33 foot boat there's absolutely loads of deck space to relax on um, which is one of the appeals of catamarans and then you've got um, hatches here down into the forward cabins and we'll go and have a look at them in just a second right so that's the cockpit and on deck let's go and have a look down in the accommodation all right, so coming from the cockpit down into the saloon, you've got three steps down, and I'm straight into standing headroom. I've got six foot three, something like basically two meters in here. Um, and I've got 360 degree views with saloon, table to port, with seating to port. Um, starboard aft, I've got a really good galley, and then starboard forwards, I've got the chart table, which I'll show you. But you've got quite a nice little um, checkerboard inlay here, that's a nice little touch. Um, yeah, so really good views all the way around, standing headroom, certainly at the aft end of the saloon, um, and a really good sociable space that for such a small boat really maximises the, the volume you've got. So in the galley, we've got a front opening fridge, you've got um, a double oven here um, with stowage pan stowage in the bottom obviously being on a catamaran it doesn't need to be gimbaled and then you've got a three burner hob on the top again that doesn't need to be gimbaled though you might want some pan holders on there if it's a little bit rough let's see uh, we're on mains power at the moment so we've got a standard electric kettle toaster and microwave and obviously quite often you'll be in a marina where you have got shore power which is good and then loads of stowage cutlery drawer um, and more just sort of bulky stowage as well as under here and a, a couple of lockers up there for all your mugs and cups so it's not far off sort of home comforts really and then going forwards you've got the chart table so it's a forward facing chart table with a little swing out seat here a little perch seat there that you can sit on and swing um, I don't know if that locks I guess you might be able to fit something that locked that in position but actually that's really comfortable and it's a proper chart table um, so it's full of your normal cruising clobber which is what you want to see space enough for a proper leisure folio um, I've got a small chart plotter unit here stereo um, Bluetooth unit 
and uh, my VHF radio. So that's all to hand and I can see where I'm going um, and I can control autopilot through here. So this boat is really well set up for, it's really conceived as a boat that you can single hand um, either from the helm or from the cockpit um, but actually with an autopilot down here and the engine remotes um, I've got almost complete control over everything apart from the sails. Um, and then your crew can get involved with sailing if they want to, but they absolutely don't have to, um, which is quite nice not to need your crew to get involved if they aren't keen on it. To starboard side, we'll go down into the starboard hull now, and this is really the owner's suite, so if this is your boat, this is probably where you would uh, sleep. Um, let's go and have a look. So the... Um, Aft end of the starboard hull, you've got this owner suite. I've got a settee berth there, loads of cubby hole stowage, stowage there, um, and just behind the door, there's a hanging space. And then I've got a king size double bed on this raised plinth that's above the engine bay. Um, and then I've got views out through these windows, and there's an escape hatch there that goes onto the bathing platform. So I can actually open that in the morning, put my coffee on the deck even crawl out of there for a little swim if I wanted to. Um, but you've got loads of space and it's standing headroom throughout, which is very comfortable. And then forwards we've got the heads. It's fairly compact. There's a, a little sea toilet there with a, a small bowl, um, a sink, mirror, and a little bit of stowage there. And a nice shower cubicle here, still with standing headroom. Um, you would probably put a little um, curtain across there, uh, but it's a proper shower cubicle, so that's all really nicely finished. To port, uh, we've got a smaller guest cabin. Um, it doesn't have hanging stowage, uh, but what it does have, it still has a small seating area. It's got a king size double, again above the engine bay. This time it's turned athwart ships um, to save a little bit of length and use the maximum width there still got the access onto the deck through the um, escape hatch um, and then forward you've got a heads but that also doubles as a second cabin as well um, yeah and full standing headroom so let's go and have a look so in the port hull um, at the forward end you've got a storage space here that will be useful for dinghies if you're not stowing it on deck or they've got oars and spinnaker poles here but that could be turned into a little kids bunk as well with a little bit of stowage um, and some stowage bins to port as well. And then forward, up into a single berth in here um, with a little bit of stowage again. Um, uh, and then under my feet here is the second heads. So this bunk is where the toilet was in the other, uh, sorry, where the shower was um, in the other hull. Uh, and there's a toilet under my feet here. So these boats are built in the UK. There are very few um, catamarans, cruising catamarans built in the UK these days. Um, the hulls are actually um, molded and fitted out in Poland, and then they're brought over to the UK for commissioning, but the company is based in Chichester Harbour on the south coast. Um, and there are not many UK catamaran builders, and this one is really suited to sailing in the UK. Uh, construction, she is um, GRP, uh, I believe it's vinyl ester resin, hand uh, laid up, um, and that's in a monocot construction um, with the, the hulls, and then you've got a deck moulding on top of that, and there are some interior mouldings as well, um, and the total weight is uh, just under 5 tonnes, 4,800 kilos uh, for light boat weight. So that's the Broad Blue 346 Cruising Catamaran. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. Um, I think it's a really interesting concept to have a boat that is um, narrow enough to go through the canals. Um, 4.98 means it can also go through the French canals down to the Med. 1.1 metre draft means you don't have a problem with draft. Um, 33 foot is a really easy, sensible size to keep in a marina, which keeps berthing fees down. Um, if you're going through the canals and you need to take the mast down, the mast will actually um, stow in the boat's own length as well, so you don't have to pay for separate um, sh shipping of the mast. Um, throughout the boat, there is standing headroom in the cockpit, in the saloon, and in both of the hulls in all of the accommodation, um, which is a really appealing prospect. It's designed to be really easy to sail. Um, and then it's also designed for sailing in 
the UK or in temperate climates where you might need a little bit more shelter. Um, uh, and it's not all about sun deck space, although there's plenty of space to relax. Um, and these boats have gone down to the Med through the canals or th through across the Atlantic. They go around the UK. So they're really competent sea boats as well. And I have to say, um, I, think it, I think it works well. I haven't been for a test sail, so I'll see if I can get one sorted. Price-wise, she comes in at £218,000. That's base price excluding VAT. So you're going to have to add on tax and then any um, specs and other things that you can need on top of that. But that's not incomparable with a cruising yacht of the same size. Mm -hmm.